I was researching some of what God had shown me. And what God had shown me on YouTube is there are so many Christians out there that believe in Christian yoga, Christian Wicca, witchcraft, all that. And what God is showing me is what he feels about it. He's addressing that in here. Some, I mean, I can't tell you how many Christians I know will ask, well, what sign are you talking about astrology? All of that. So let me go to the scripture. And we are reading from verse 9 to verse 15. All right. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, a wizard, or a necromancer. Necromancer, I looked it up, has to deal with all things occult, new age, all of that. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearkened unto observers and times, observers of times, and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee or allowed thee to do so. Mm, mm, mm. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So what God is saying, listen to his messengers. Don't listen to all this other stuff you get on YouTube and all that. Some people get into crystals. I know a young lady that got into crystals, loved the Lord with all her heart, followed him in holiness, and she dabbled in the crystals ignorantly, not even knowing that it was considered part of the occult. And she almost lost her mind permanently. And she's still recovering. Seriously. Was found for days wandering in the streets, didn't even know her own name. And we went through all kind of deliverance over that phone. I heard demons coming out left and right casting them suckers out. It took days and weeks to get to the point where things kind of leveled off and got back to normal, but it's taken now years of recovery. So there are things we don't realize when we're dabbling into. We don't realize the harm, the danger. And the sad part of this is many people, especially a lot of you on YouTube, Believe more in witchcraft, in the powers of tarot cards, in astrology, in yoga. You know what yoga means? Yoga means to yoke up with idol gods. That's what yoga means. So there is no such thing as Christian yoga, at no more than there's anything about Christian witchcraft. No such thing. They're, di they're diametrically opposed to each other. Diametrically opposed. So that's where we come into this day and age where we hear people say right is wrong and wrong is right. Mm -hmm. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. Yeah, that, that's a perfect example. People love what's wrong. They love feeding their flesh. They love doing what they're big and bad enough to do. And if that's wrong, they don't want to do right because that's what they love. That's where their heart is. See, some of y'all out there tinkering around with stuff. 
and you don't realize the danger. God gave me this warning scripture to his people. That's the scary part. This is addressed to God's people and to those who claim to be his people. God's not playing. See, I want to share. I got to keep going. Uh, there is a story in the Bible where a servant of God ended up getting a servant of God ended up getting leprosy. Some of you may know the story, some of you may not. So we're going to share that story right now. Mm, mm, mm. All right, and this is one of the reasons. There are times, see, the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's Bible. And a lot of times when we go against God, Sometimes we're going against God by going against his people. And we have to be very careful how we go against God's people. I am telling you, I have no idea. I, I, anyway, let me continue speaking. We're going to read this story from Numbers chapter 12. Starting at verse 1 until this particular part of the story ends. Mm, mm, mm. Now, that's why you got to watch what you say behind your brothers and sisters' backs. You got to watch what you scheme. You got to watch how you uh, plan out your little uh, d d devices. Because God sees it. When nobody else does, God is keeping the books. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. You know what's funny about that? The people had a problem with it. God didn't. God never criticized Moses for marrying an Ethiopian woman. It was the people that had an issue. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken by, only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, not weak, meek, above all men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Mm. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of a cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently, which means I'll make it crystal clear to him and not in dark speeches. In other words, he's not keeping it as a secret. He's letting the world know Moses is his man. And the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold. Wherefore, then where ye, were ye not afraid? How, in other words, how come you weren't afraid to speak against my servant, Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. Anyway, so after they copped a plea and asked God to forgive them, God still let Miriam uh, hold on to that leprosy. He, he stuck it on her for a week and sent her outside the camp until she went through the cleansing process and then allowed her 
to come back in, he restored her, but she had to pay a penalty. My question to you is what penalty do you have to pay for your mouth? Anytime you speak against God's people, your brothers and sisters in Christ, God's messengers, God's leaders, you got to be careful. There are some among you, you don't even know which one of you have the calling of God on you, and you're yakking against them. You're telling lies behind their back. You're turning people against them, and you don't realize that too is a form of rebellion. Rebellion is as of witchcraft. You got to be careful how you treat each other in the body of Christ. That's very serious to God. All right. Now, we're going to go on because I know this is a word of warning and I'm trying not to bog down anywhere. This is how I knew God wanted me to deal with that. In Deuteronomy chapter 24, and I'm just reading it real quick. It's one verse, two verses, verse eight and verse nine. Wow. I had no idea. These are two different books now. One was Deuteronomy, one was Numbers and all of that. So now we're in Deuteronomy. And this is the thing that blew me away because I said, Lord, you want me to deal with that? And, and this is what I got next. And when I read, I came across these two sentences in this chapter. Totally confirm what God was saying. Watch your mouth. James chapter 3. Watch your mouth. Watch your tongue. And see, if you got things to say, you got bitterness in your heart. You got unforgiveness. You got issues that you haven't resolved and you haven't handled it God's way because what you should have done was gone to the people and talked it out and hashed it out and prayed it out and get it out of your heart. All right. This is what God says. Take heed. This is verse eight. Take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou observe diligently and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you as I command them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam, by the way. Talking right back to what happened to Miriam with leprosy. After that, ye were come forth out of Egypt. Remember that? Remember it. Don't forget that. Because see, what God is trying to say is there is a payday for them flapping tongues. Anytime you try to destroy someone's reputation, there's a payday for that. Anytime you do that, anytime you try to make somebody look bad in other people's eyes, there's a payday for that. Now I'm going to share something with you. I remember as I was reading these scriptures, the Lord gave me a, a clear picture and he, and it was a, an image when um, I got to go down to Numbers 24, this is a warning scripture and I'm trying to, I'm trying to fly through it. There was a point where uh, uh, Balaam was hired to curse the people of Israel, all right? And God would not allow him to do it. He would constantly make him speak blessings when he was there to curse the people. And when the guy that hired him was angry, he said, I got to obey God. I can't go against God. If God says bless, I got to bless. I cannot curse. I'm just, I'm just uh, making it quick for the sake of time. So this is Numbers 24. So he sits there and he's blessing the people. So uh, Balak is the one, B-A-L-A-K. He was the one that was angry. Starting at verse 10, and Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee ye. Now, so he was upset with him, totally upset. Just, just running that real quick, because he wanted this guy to, to curse God's people, and he couldn't do it. He was a prophet of God. He couldn't do it. Could not do it. He would not go against God. 
So what I want to share with you is there are times when, I mean, God is so into this. He's very serious about what comes out of our mouth about each other. Very serious. Now, getting counsel and sharing things, that's one thing. But sitting there, taking a person's name, their reputation, and putting a bad light on it because you got issues with that person. So you're going to spread the word and let everybody know how jacked up that person is in your eyes? Oh, you better watch that. That is not good. This is what the Lord showed me as I was reading this chapter. I saw an image. And in the image, I'm calling it an image for those of you who are not into the spiritual realm, but it was really a vision. And what I saw was a parent that was going one direction and a child that was going in another direction. And the child had totally got turned over to a gay lifestyle as an, as a result of the cursing that the parent was doing. So be very, very careful about what you do because what you do affects your kids. It affects your family. It affects everybody around you and your immediate sphere of influence because if they get caught up in it with you, they have to pay the penalty. Remember what God did with Achan. When Achan, when the Israelites went out and God told them, don't take any of the, any of the stuff just, just leave it alone. And he hid a Babylonian garment and he had some other items with him that he kept and he dug deep under his tent and he hid it. Sin was in the camp. Nobody knew it but God. And they could not understand in Joshua chapter 7. They could not understand why they lost the battle of Ai. They couldn't understand that. They had plenty of folks to do battle. They sh it should have been an easy win. But nobody, nobody in the camp knew. This was the whole, the whole camp of Israel. Nobody knew what Achan had done. But Achan and his family, check that out, his family. This is a warning, you guys. And because he hid what God referred to as the accursed thing under his tent, under his stuff, what he ended up doing was he kept it quiet. His family, whatever family members were there, kept it quiet. They hid each other's sin. They hid it, kept it under the cuff, kept it on the down low. And what ends up happening? Oh, you just have no idea. God got so upset that when Joshua was crying his eyes out when they lost the war, here God is crying, I mean, Joshua is crying his eyes out. How could you do this? You let us in and you let us lose. What is going on? He's crying the blues and God tells him, get up off your face. Israel, he did not say Achan. He said, Israel has sinned. You wonder why the body of Christ has no power. Because we wink at each other's sins. We cover for each other's sins. We keep everything on the down low. We don't confront sin. We don't rebuke sin. We wink at it. And God ain't winking. This is a word of warning, you guys. This is the season of judgment. And we've got to be careful how we handle the little foxes in our lives that we think are not a big deal. They are a very big deal to God. So what happened? God had Joshua line everybody up. And when it came to Achan, he called him out, him and his family members. And when he called his family members out, guess what? It was over for them. It was over for them. They got swallowed up, baby. They all perished. Because of Achan, what Achan did, and the fact that nobody in the family came and said, oh, God, have mercy. Achan has sinned. I don't want to be a part of it. No, they kept it on the down low. So as a result, they were considered accomplices after the fact. 
and they paid the same penalty as Achan. Don't let your sins cause your family members, people that are right up in your sphere of influence, don't let your little pet sins cause curses to come down on your kids. Don't let that happen. Don't let your little pet sins and the little games you play cause curses and death to spread all in your family. What happened with Eli? Eli was a prophet of God. And his sons totally degraded everything that had to do with the Lord, the holy things, the offerings of the Lord. They were snatching the women that were bringing the offerings. They were doing all kind of abominations, totally dissing everything that pertained to God in the temple. And what did God do? God told Eli, through a woman given birth. A woman was given birth and she said, when her child died, she said, uh, she named the boy Ichabod, which means the glory of the Lord has departed. Do you want the presence of God to depart from you? Be very careful because what ended up happening in Eli's family line was the curse was spoken over them. Nobody would live to a full age. It was almost as if anybody, everybody would die by the time they were, you know, let's just throw a number out there, 25 years old. They'd all die young. Why? Because of Eli. Eli didn't deal with the sin. He kept it on the down low. He fussed at the sons, but he didn't discipline them. He didn't handle it. All right. Now, let's go on down. This is a warning, you guys. Be very careful. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to, this is the Ten Commandments. I'm going to deal with verse 6. Verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, and verse 10. Mm. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Do you realize when you dabble in witchcraft, when you dabble in tarot cards, when you dabble in things occult, in things new age, in things astrology, when you dabble in psychic hotlines, when you dabble in any of that stuff with mediums, with wizards, with any kind of divination, huh? Necromancy, as he calls it, any kind of stuff that has to do with that. There's no such thing as a Christian witch. That's, you might as well say that you're calling a demon a Christian. If there's no such thing as a Christian demon, then you know there's no such thing as a Christian witch. Think about that. You cannot call right wrong and wrong right and light darkness and darkness light. No, there is no light in darkness, y'all. You have to remember there's a line. God drew the line. And there is light and there is dark. The light dispels the dark. But when you have been shed, when you have the light of God shed in your light and you invite the darkness, you are an abomination to God. God did not only say that your act is an abomination. He said you are an abomination. You have to be careful. You have to choose you this day who you will serve. 
you have to be very, very careful because later on down the road, you wonder why you got financial problems, why you got health problems, why your kids are dying young, why your husband's dying young, why your, your wife is dying young, why this is happening and that's happening. And it's from one, one tragedy to the next, to the next, to the next, and you feel like you're cursed. You might be. You might be. Now, there's a difference between being cursed and being under attack. So don't get it twisted. Sometimes you're being under attack because the enemy is trying to wear you out and drive you from the Lord. Do not be weary in well-doing in that case. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. God is for you. Who can be against you? God is for you. Psalms 27. So remember, knowing that God is for his people that are for him. Know there's a flip side to that. For those of you who are playing God, who are playing church, who are playing this whole walk, and the, you, you, you walk, you quack, you waddle like a Christian. What did God say? Not everyone that says, that says to me, Lord, Lord. Hmm. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord. See, some of you, you think you're part of the kingdom, but you are but you got your kingdoms twisted. You're not part of God's kingdom. You're part of the darkness. You're part of the devil's kingdom, and you're a servant of your father of lies, the devil. Yeah, it sounds hard, I know. It sounds real hard. But let me tell you this. Like I said before, God is not playing tiddlywinks with your walk with God. He's not playing. He's very, very serious. So you have to know that you know that you know where you stand. You have to draw the line. You have to get rid of everything that is diametrically opposed to the ways of God. You got to be very careful. You can't allow it in your house. You can't tolerate it. You can't wink at it. You can't laugh at it and agree with it. No, you cannot. And I'm going to share with you the same way that Miriam, I'm seeing this right now in my mind, the same way that Miriam had that sin in her heart. And God exposed it by letting leprosy show up on her skin. There are some of you born again Christians. You got skin problems. You got hair problems. You got problems all over you. And you wonder where is all this coming from? There may be a sin that you've hidden that you're not dealing with. And it shows up in the physical form. That's where you got to go to God and say, Lord, show me. I do not want to lose out on you. Be very careful. Do not tolerate it. Do not play. God is not a man that he should lie. And God is not going to be mocked by anybody. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What are you sowing into? What are you sowing in your life? What are you doing in your life? What are you building? Huh? What are you building? What's, in, what's deep down in that heart that nobody else sees but God? You got to be very careful now. You might think that you could put all kind of hexes, spells, and put all kind of little formulas and rub things on people and play all these little witchcraft games, trying to get them to do things your way. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen because God's going to have his way in your whirlwind, and you ain't going to like the way his way turns out for you if you don't stop. Some of you won't live out half your lives because of the cursed things you allow in your life. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Now, bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to God's people. That's just part of life being on this planet. Even when the man that was blind, when Jesus 
was, was dealing with the man that was blind and they said, well, whose sin caused him to lose his eyesight? Was it his parents' sin or was it his sin? Jesus said neither. This is for the glory of God. So there are saints that suffer on this planet for the glory of God, not because there's sin in their life or their sin in their ancestry, but be for the glory of God. But you and God know. You and God know what's going on. You know, God knows. So all I ask you to do is get rid of the accursed thing in your life. Quit dabbling in it. Don't be talking about what sign are you. Oh, you must be an Aries. You must be a, a, a Virgo. You must be a this. You must be a that. No, that is diametrically opposed to what God is. My sign is the cross. That's my sign. Jesus Christ and him crucified. What's your sign? Mm -hmm. Right. You're doing all these little stretch exercises, calling it Christian yoga, not knowing that Christian yoga means literally to yoke up with the idols. You're yoking up soul to soul with the idols. Certain movements you do bring in certain powers from the dark side into your life. Why would you seek the living among the dead? You got to be careful with that, y'all. This is not a game. You don't just decide, okay, I'll play for 10 minutes. I'll play for two months. And then after I finish playing, I'll bail out when I get good and ready. It's like a dope addict. Oh, I can quit anytime I want. Like an alcoholic. I can quit anytime I want. I'm not addicted. Yeah, right. But see, what you don't realize is when you toy with sin, when you toy with things demonic, and you play with it, and then you draw your hand back, and you play with it, and you draw your hand back, because see, this is the demonic, this is you playing with it. One of these days, you're going to play too long, and it's going to get a hold on you, baby. And when you try, you decide you've had enough, and you want to get out, you can't. Because it's, it's, it's a stronghold in your life. It will have your mind, it will have your body, it will have your money. It will have your family members. And you won't be able to break loose. And you do not want God to lift his hand like the woman whose child was dying called him Ichabod and said the glory of the Lord has departed. You don't want the Lord to depart out of your life because you are in the devil's grip for a long time at that point. And that's when God has turned you over to a reprobate mind. This is a warning, you guys. Be very, very careful about what you dabble in, about what you allow, about what you wink at. You feel compassionate to them because they're committing a sin and you know the Bible speaks against it, but they're a relative, so you love them. It's okay. They don't mean any harm. No, it's not okay. Love them, but hate the sin. Love them. Don't pamper the sin. Don't excuse the sin. Pray for them to be delivered. I don't care what the stronghold is. I don't care what the sin is. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Whatever the Lord commands, he can give the ability to carry out his command. Whatever God requires, he can supernaturally infuse you with the power to carry out what he said. He's not unjust. If he wants you to do it this way, he'll help you do it. Are you asking for his help? Or are you determined to do it your way because you've got your list and your litany of excuses? Yeah. See, some of us just want to do it our way. Remember, even rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft in God's eyes. Be very careful where you stand. Be very careful what's the, the little sins that you allow and you pet, you wink at. 
You wink at someone else's sin. They talk about something. You know that's diametrically opposed to God. You know that you wouldn't even sit in that conversation of God if you saw God standing next to you in the room. But because you want to be liked, you laugh at their little nasty jokes. You laugh at their little snide remarks against one of your relatives. You got to be careful about that. Because if your relative is a child of God, you're calling, you're conjuring up curses, baby. Be careful. All right. I'm going to stop. That's your warning. If you are caught up in any of that stuff, ask God to forgive you. Turn away from it. A 180 degree turn. About face, baby. And head in another direction towards God. Please. That's your warning. God bless you. I hope you take heed for your sake, for your family's sake, for everyone's sake that's close to you.